Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Hall H Show. We are with the uh, incomparable Mr. Matt, Uncle Dunphy Dunford. Ah, oh, un- incomparable. I've been called a lot of things. I mean, incompetent, incredulous, uncredible. But uh, yeah, this is a new one. So yeah, I'm happy to hear it. <laughs> so we are at the uh, panels, uh, comic book and coffee shop here in Oceanside, California for a little artist meet and greet. I just interviewed uh, the four artists and... Uh, I saw Matt at the, at the, out of the corner of my eye, and I said, I got to get him on, on this podcast, too. So uh, how, you do, how you doing? I'm doing okay, but it's like, I mean, it's so unusual for me to show up at a comic event. I mean, it's like, I mean, me going to an event with comic books, I mean, that's just like completely unheard of. I mean, why would I do that? So I know how rare it is for me to appear at such events like this, but I guess I'm happy to be here. And you know what? Panels here in Oceanside is a wonderful place, and... I came here about a month ago after uh, an event that I was uh, putting up called uh, Poke Oasis, which was a uh, you know fandom for Pokemon events and whatnot that's put on by Video Game Connection and the folks at Nerdbot. And I decided, you know what? It's been a long day. Let me uh, test the new guys. And I came here and I absolutely loved it. It's really resonated with me because you've been hearing about all these like comic and coffee shops. They've got one in Arizona. They got one in New York. But it's like we don't have one yet. In the in the San Diego area, the closest one I could think of was you know there's one in the San Francisco area because every time I go to the Bay Area, it's like I literally will spend my vacation just comic shop, comic shop, comic shop, comic shop, comic shop, comic shop. But the fact that we finally have one that's you know within San Diego County now, I think is a great thing. And I came in, and the owner, uh, you know, Alvaro Santillo, like they're wonderful. And it's great what they're doing. And they're helping local creators. They're selling books to the big two. They're having community events here. Because every comic store should bring something different. And I don't play favorites with comic stores. I go to all of them. And I love just being part of them in any way I can. And so now with this store, here doing this with the comics and coffee, I think it's wonderful. What's your uh, favorite pastry? They also have pastries here. You know, they do have pastries here. And regrettably, I have to say that I have not tried them yet because I'm trying to stay away from carbs because fighting the dad bod, getting back in shape, fighting the dad bod so I can look like Rad God. Yeah. It's one of Chad Kavanaugh's ones if you haven't seen it yet. Well, if you ever decided to try one, the blueberry is pretty good. The blueberry okay. pie. I might try the blueberry. It's yeah. like uh, one of the things. Sorry, flexing <laughs> the camera for you. Uh, so what's, uh, what's new with you? I think the last time we had you on the show, it was our uh, San Diego Comic-Con recap. Oh, yeah, San Diego Comic-Con recap. Have you be- have you- can you believe it's already been three months since Comic-Con wrapped? Uh, but, you know, we do have a lot of other things in the work. I have been going around to a lot of conventions. Uh, let's see. Earlier today, I was down at the TS uh, Toy Show, so I picked up some toys there and spoke with uh, Aaron. Sparrow, the writer of the Darkwing Duck comic, who is, you know, a really cool guy, and learning the fact of, like, he actually also wrote the uh, Darkwing Duck comic for Boom Studios, but didn't get proper credit, but now publications of it have been changed, and he is getting proper credit on it, so it's making amends for things, and that was really cool to talk with him, because I'm a huge Darkwing Duck fan. I was recently at NerdBotCon, which was a whole lot of fun, where I did uh, seven Weird Al cosplays in one day, so just variations on Weird Al, so putting that into perspective, that was you know really a whole lot of fun. Uh, the folks at NerdBot put on a fantastic con, and they're going to be doing some more stuff along the way. And... Let's see, last night I also did the Little Fish cosplay figure drawing session where we had at least, I think we had 30 artists come out in force to draw our wonderful featured models of Miss Echo Blocker, who the guys could not take her, their eyes off her, and like, yeah, thanks for good reason. And also Mr. Sean Richter, who you introduced me to, was a featured model there, busting out his Captain America and his Wolverine, and that was just wonderful. I ha- And we had a blast. It was so many wonderful moments, a bunch of wonderful art produced, and we're already looking forward to the next one, because like, you know, we just love cultivating the art community, the comic community, the cosplayers. Just take it all in and bring it all together. Um, can you briefly tell us about Little Fish? comic book studios okay so little fish comic book studio which is now in its fifth year is san diego's premier art education institute so when you look at resources for getting into comic art i mean we have a lot of wonderful talent here but if you ask them 
where'd you get started? A lot of them say, well, I started kind of just tracing on my own, or I had to wait till I was like in college to go to art school. There's not really a good resource for that that's accessible. And so Alonso Nunez sought to himself create a place that is affordable and accessible for artists of any age. I mean, we have students as young as seven, and I think our oldest is 45 to just learn comics. So if you want to learn to draw superheroes, if you want to learn to draw anime, if you want to learn like, you know, Sunday strips, web comics, Little Fish can teach you the fundamentals of all the cartooning and sequential art that you need. And we are located over by the SDSU area on, uh, on El Cajon Boulevard in the uh, not so sketchy area. So feel free to come by, check out our library. It's great for kids, great for adults. If you want to learn to make comics, we can hook you up. And uh, you're also part of the uh, San Diego Comic Fest. Ah, yes, San Diego Comic Fest, which is just concluded its fifth year and entering its sixth year. And so now we are six months away. It will be happening from April 20th through the 22nd in 2018. So it's a nice little three-day show. And it's going to be a whole lot of fun. This year we are showcasing 200 years of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. So we will have a wonderful, uh, wonderful cast, cast of characters. Uh, some of our special guests that we have on board, uh, we've got Steve Purcell, who's you know an art director at Pixar, and he was one of the fundamental guys founding of founding of the LucasArts video game division. He was responsible for doing Sam and Max and the Monkey Island franchises, and so he's going to be joining us. He's also one of the lead character artists on Brave, so if you're a fan of Brave, it's great to meet Steve Purcell. Uh, Boris Karloff's daughter, Sarah Karloff, is going to be swinging by to talk about her father and his experiences as Frankenstein, so we do have like some of that. And our special guest is going to be Miss Karen Berger, who is the former editor-in-chief of Vertigo, and, you know, helping to launched the British invasion of creators, bringing over guys like Neil Gaiman, Grant Morrison, Alan Moore, and helping fundamentally establish their careers while she was at DC Comics and eventually you know, transitioning to you know, leading Vertigo in the early 1990s. So yeah, Comic Fest is going to be a whole lot of fun, and uh, stay tuned. We'll have a couple more announcements to make. We'll be expanding onto other things besides the Frankenstein thing, but uh, yeah, we got a lot of good guests coming in, and we're just warming up. And where's it going to be held uh, in next year? It's, uh, we will no longer be at the uh, Four Point Sheraton, but uh, this year we uh, will be back at the uh, Town and Country Hotel in the Mission Valley area, so you'll be uh, doing our thing there. We've been there before. It's a good spot for us, so we're looking forward to going back and you know, just jumping around and having it because we know how to use that venue and play to our advantages, so we want to use it to make sure you have a good time. What are you reading right now? What am I reading right now? You know what? It's hard to say that I haven't been reading as much as I could be, but it's just what it's gotten to life because I go around and I work and I cultivate and I go to events and despite the amount of books that I am buying, I'm not reading as much as I could be. But uh, ones that I have read uh, as of late, uh, I read uh, Francesco Francavilla's uh, Black Beetle sequel that he did, which is actually a prequel, and I thought that was actually a phenomenal story, and it was really wonderfully done. I also uh, read Box Brown's uh, biography of Andre the Giant, and I thought that was a wonderful book as well. And otherwise, I've just been reading a lot of comic history and other stuff like that, and and, you know, talks on, you know, uh, Comic-Con. You are the world's youngest comic book historian. Yeah, I mean, I am the world's youngest comic book historian, but, you know, I'm getting older now. I'm going to be 32 next month. I mean, so old. I mean, I can barely call myself that. I'm like, <laughs> But, yeah, it's just like I really wish I could be reading as many comics as I could. But the truth is I've just been too busy to read them. And I'm not going to be a fake or, like, lie about it and say I'm reading this, I'm reading that. I mean, I will go in and I will buy them and I will support. But I... Someday, I will tell myself, someday, I won't be as busy as I have to be, and I'll be able to be the fan that I want to be. But until now, I have to be the responsible professional and seek to where the priorities go. And I wish I could prioritize reading comic books and goofing off all day like I used to. I miss it. I honestly do. It's one of the things, but... I've got a lot going on. Well, you do goof off every once in a while in your Facebook Live videos. You know, I do goof off every once in a while with, you know, the Uncle Dunphy Power Hour, which usually does not last about an hour or so. But, uh, you know, I think it's a fun way to goof off. You put a camera in front of me. You put me on stage. You put me in an audience, whatever. I'll annoy them and entertain them in any way I see fit. It's what I do. How many uh, fidget, uh, fidget spinners do you have now? Well, you know... 
out of my 1,000, I've actually probably down to my, my fourth one right now because I keep them still in the box still. I spin them and sometimes they fall and then I break them and then I can like, you know, take them and I can like make like brass knuckles out of my fidget spinners. I can fuse them together and make triple fidget spinners. But you find that when you fuse them together, it affects the spin ratio so they don't spin as well. So even the broken fidget spinners that I do have, I will repair them and keep them together because every fidget spinner counts in this world. So for our audience members that do not know the story behind your fidget spinners, do you want to sort of do a brief uh, recap of that? Well, so for my day job, I work for a World War II historical society called World War Wings, where I'm a writer there writing about World War II history, military aviation, and just basically just like, you know, war history type stuff. And my boss thought it was a good idea to order 1,000 fidget spinners based with the design of the Corsair, which was a uh, naval uh, naval aviation plane used during World War II. And if you're a Star Wars fan, you know that the wings fold up, and so that's what the TIE Fighter is based on. And he thought, okay, we'll do it as the uh, based on the fidget spinner propeller. And I'm like, mm, fidget spinners are kind of like so three months ago. And he says, let's just do it anyway, because by then old people will be getting into them. And so like, I don't think old people like fidget spinners. I think they think they're the most toxic thing on earth. So he decides to order them anyway, but orders them from China. So anything you order from China will take two months to get here. So here we are half a year behind the fidget spinner trend. But like, you know, I'd never actually played with a fidget spinner in my life. So I'm like, okay, let me try it. And I'm like, and I realized this is the greatest thing in the world because all they do is annoy people. And if you give me something to annoy people, I will like, take it to no end and now I have like a thousand of them and it's like here I am behind the trend and like I mean the only thing more annoying than that would be like selfie sticks I mean who uses those who uses a selfie stick so uh, speaking of annoying like if people want to get annoyed online where can they find you if you want to get annoyed online, you can just find me at Facebook, uh, just Matt Dunford, M-A-T-T-D-U-N-F-O-R-D. You can also find me on Instagram. So if you want to see me just annoying the hell out of you, it's typically just selfies of me, my hair, different fashions and stuff that I do. And uh, Bowser, the fat dog at my office who lies around being sad all day because that's what bulldogs do. They're just sad and fat. But no Twitter. But no Twitter. I don't really do Twitter. My Twitter gets constantly hacked by porn bots. And honestly, like, Twitter's where you go to pretend to be important. I know I'm not important. I'm just a dork. <laughs> where can uh, people find you in the near future? What, what kind of other projects uh, you, are you working on? Well, I've got uh, one in the work called uh, Non-Disclosure Agreement, and then I will be involved in another uh, one called uh, Non-Disclosure Agreement. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you can always find me at Little Fish Comic Book Studio, which is one of the things. And, of course, you can always find me at uh, San Diego Comic Fest. And um, you can also find me at certain events uh, coming up uh, during WonderCon called Can't Talk About It. And uh, that'll be Saturday night at 8 p.m., so I can't talk about it just yet. And then, uh, yeah, so it's like, you know, we got a, I got a couple of things in the work, so, but just, you know, can't talk about it yet. All right, well, when you are able to talk about it, let me know. Oh, trust me, I won't be able to shut up about it. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, it's nice catching up with you, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Always a pleasure, man. All right. <laughs> Peace, cheers, talk to you later.